Yo, 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 yo. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? We at the AMC 30. Yeah, the AMC 30 here in Ontario. About to catch us that new blockbuster that's uh, everybody's anticipating. Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, so uh, it's the uh, sequel to part two, which is uh, Mad... No, actually, which is the Road Warrior. The original being Mad Max. It's supposed to fit right before Thunderdome. And uh, well, from what we've been hearing from everybody, it's supposed to be straight bananas. So we're about to catch it in 3D, y'all. Mad Max, Fury Road, Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron. About to get it on. Yeah. Yo, Mad Max, Fury Road. But we about to get in there, about to watch the film. 3D, let's get in there, yo. So, uh, yeah, that was Mad Max Fury Road. We're gonna give it a big old, uh, like that. We're gonna put it at 11 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was dope, it was dope. Yeah, Mad Max Fury Road was dope, but it was kind of all action. It was all action, all, all action. And your lead you barely spoke. Mr. Max, that was mad, he barely spoke. And um, did he have anything to be mad about? Yeah, but he should have been kind of used to the environment. So maybe there wasn't much to be mad about. He kind of should have got over what he was initially mad about two movies ago. I don't know. That was uh, Mad Max. Fury Road, and uh, it was dope. Don't get me wrong, y'all. Don't get me wrong, y'all. That's Mad Max Fury Road. We're gonna put it at, we're gonna give it a, I don't know, like one of those kind of things, kind of, uh, like kind of teetering type of thing. Yo, it was actually, it should have been called, it should have been called Mad Maxine because Charlize Theron was really doing it the most and everything and um, yeah, Mad Max was dope. It was very dope. But um, the beginning, the first 30 minutes had me kind of like just wide-eyed open like, whoa, what's going on? This is like dope, dope, dope. And then it kind of, kind of just kind of, I won't say flatline, but it just kind of set its course from that point on. But Mad Max was dope. I got to give it to it. You have to go out and see it. Go see it in 3D. Or not. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it's, you know, vital that you see it in 3D. It makes it a, a better experience, possibly. But, yeah. Go check out Mad Max and Mad Maxine Fury Road, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Mad Max there was kind of cr crazy story. Um, you know, I would say it was kind of a mixture of uh, the homesman and with the Mad Max kind of premise. You know what I mean? If you've seen The Homesman with Tommy Lee Jones and Hilary Swank, I'll say the story is kind of a little bit of that along with the whole Mad Max environment and premise. So Mad Max was cool. I'll give it a thumbs up. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Mad Max. I don't, I don't see any more sequels from this. I wouldn't want to go back to this environment. Um, you couldn't up the stakes with this, make it more entertaining. So it's a good one shot, but that's about it. It's, it's all action. It's, that's the thing. The story is all action, and it's all about saving that precious cargo, which is the ladies for reproduction and uh, the scarcity of water. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, Mad Max, go check it out. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Peace. Um, I'm thinking I'm having further things to say. I'm thinking I'm having further things to say about Mad Max. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all action. It's all action. 
And I'm thinking that uh, had it not been so much with the all action vibe, I think audiences would possibly come out this weekend. From, when it, from the seven o'clock showing events or the early screening that I attended at the uh, AMC 30, you know, I was uh, one of maybe uh, seven people, if not six, in attendance. And I'm hoping that's just because it's Thursday night. You know, um, I'm not sure what people are gonna come out to see this this weekend. Maybe they're gonna see, go with their girlfriends and such to see uh, Pitch Perfect. You gotta understand, it's a different day and age. It's a different kind of prime demographic. The prime demographic ain't just 18 to 25 year old males or 18 to 30 year old males. It's 18 to 25 to 30 year old males and females. And those, th those that, that group, they kind of would rather see Pitch Perfect. It's a different type of, it's the age of Aquarius is what I'm saying, y'all. It's the age of Aquarius. And Mad Max may be a little too testosterone filled even the ladies performances may be a little testosterone fail for today's movie going audience so what i'm saying is had the films spoke a little more intelligently about the climate that's on display this post-apocalyptic era and what's going on in the film as far as protecting these uh women who are just uh there to breed for the you know war babies you know war boys um, and to continue the same old, uh, the same old, same old. Um, had it, had the dialogue sp spoken a little more true, maybe the word of mouth would have spread, but this is all action. Yeah, like I was saying, this movie, Mad Max Fury Road, is pretty much a clash of the Holmesman, the Tommy Lee Jones film with uh, Hilary Swank, and I would say possibly the Book of Eli. I don't know, now that I think about it, maybe Mad Max Fury Road is a combination of, uh, let's see, The Homesman and Waterworld. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's, it spoke about the global crisis of uh, climate change. Yeah, my main complaint with Mad Max is that it didn't speak to anything like that. And um, we've seen films that have before whether it be Book of Eli or Waterworld. You know, Waterworld would be a, a Mad Max, Fury Rose, kind of like doppelganger cousin in a way, but just the opposite, you know what I mean? Whereas Waterworld had the plentiful resource of water, but the limited resource of dry land. And Mad Max, limited resource of water, plentiful amount of land, and also, just uh, the environment of being able to just breed comfortably, which made women a um, commodity in a way. So, um, yeah, Mad Max was just all action and, and less brains. And I would have preferred a little more brains because the aesthetic of it spoke to some brains, but, you know, Aesthetics don't speak for the thoughts. You know what I mean? Um, so it's post-apocalyptic, dreary future, bleak outlook. You know, may not be too entertaining to some, but it was definitely a lot of crazy action going on. I mean, you definitely wasn't bored, but you may get a little bit tired or exhausted by all the continuous action in this uh, rustic future. I'm curious how Mad Max Fury Road is gonna do at the box office this weekend because my theater was kinda, kinda empty. But from a lot of the reviews I'm, I'm hearing, it's a 10, I guess. I wouldn't give it a 10, you know. It didn't speak too much about the uh, how, how it came to be. It just came to be, you know. Um, whereas Book of Eli kind of has some dialogue speaking to such. So, yo, 
That's Mad Max Fury Road. Hemmed up. A nice little bow for y'all from me. And if this light don't turn green, here we go. Jeez Louise. Yeah, so uh, Mad Max Fury Road, y'all. It's the summer action joint with Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron. And uh, they get down in that film, so go check it out. Check out the trailer. In this wasteland, I am the one who runs from both the living and the dead. A man reduced to a single instinct. Survive. Crazy. Or everyone else. 